consider annual national car sales. The value of a randomly selected car is given by a random variable with density function, x to the minus two when x is greater than one, and zero otherwise. Given that a randomly selected car has a value greater than five, what's the probability that that car has a value less than or equal to 10? Now, because we see the word given showing up, we're gonna have to work with a conditional probability. So, we write down our definition. If I have two events, E and F, the probability of event E happening, given that F occurs, is gonna be given by the probability of E intersect F, divided by the probability of F. So, the idea is, your universe is gonna shrink down to the event F, okay, we're assuming F occurs, and then we just wanna know what part of E takes up F. So that's your conditional probability. Now, we also have to work with the density function. So when we have a density function, the probability of an event E, we take our density function, and then we integrate over our event. Now, we have two events here. First event, we're gonna have that our random variable is less than or equal to 10. Our second event is gonna be that our random variable x is greater than five. So if I want the probability of the intersection, we're just gonna take greater than five, less than or equal to 10, and then we're gonna integrate over our density function. So I'm gonna compute this definite integral right here. So I'm gonna take definite integral going from five to 10 of x to the minus two with respect to x. So the rule is we add one and flip it over. I get a minus x to the minus one. We're gonna evaluate at 10 and five and take the difference. So that's gonna give me 1 tenth. So that's the probability of the intersection. For the probability of f, okay, well our event's just x bigger than five, so our limits are gonna go from five to infinity, do the same integral, and then we'll note Okay, well, if I take this limit here as x goes to infinity, one over x goes to zero. So I get a zero here. And then if we put a five in, we're gonna get a one-fifth. Okay, so it'll be minus a minus one-fifth. So the probability of f is one-fifth. Now, for the conditional probability, we're gonna take the intersection, find this probability, divide by the probability of f, and then that's gonna give us one-half. Here's another way to look at the problem. Let's consider the cumulative distribution function. So it's gonna be defined as, well, if capital F of X equal to the probability of a random variable less than or equal to X. Now, this is just gonna be the definite integral from one to X of our density function. So here I'll use a T instead of an X. So that's gonna to go to minus T to the minus one. We evaluate at one and X and take the difference. So that gives me one minus one over x. Now, what are we doing here? Well, we're just gonna take our density function. This is gonna tell us, okay, the area between one and the x that we're interested in. So this is just telling you the amount of area that you're measuring up to x. Okay, and that's gonna be the same as our probability. Now, the checks on this. If we put a one in here, okay, since we're starting at one, okay, the probability between one and one is gonna be equal to zero. And we know when we put one in here, a zero comes out. If I let our x go off to infinity, our function should go to one. That's just saying we're gonna take all the area, and that should go to one since we're considering a probability space. Now, if I let x go to infinity here, this term's gonna to go to zero, so we're gonna get out of one. So, our cumulative distribution function checks out. Now, how do we use it? So this is just drawing pictures. First, the probability of my intersection. It's gonna be the probability of x greater than five, x less than or equal to 10. So we draw our density function, and we're concerned with the area between five and 10. Now, if you notice, we want the area between one and 10, take away the area between one and five. So that's just gonna be capital F of 10 minus capital F of five put it into one minus one over x. Then we get our one over 10 that agrees with what we had before. Then for the probability of f, we have the probability of x greater than five. I draw the picture. So note what do we have here? 
Well, we have the probability of the whole entire space, which is one. And then we're gonna throw away the amount that's between one and five. So that's just gonna be our function evaluated at five. So we're gonna have one minus one minus one over five, which is one fifth, which agrees with our answer from before. Put things into our conditional probability formula. Outcomes are one half again. So second method checks our first method.